Hi there. Thanks for watching this video series of reinforcement learning with TensorFlow agents. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. This video is a special episode because we are going to use the Bandit library for movie recommendations. It sits at the intersection of two of our video series, reinforcement learning with TF agents and building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. So we're going to use the techniques from both reinforcement learning and recommendation systems. In case you are coming from the reinforcement learning path and are not familiar with recommendation systems, let's do a quick review here. Recommendation systems are ubiquitous. YouTube, Google Play, and Google Maps all have a number of places for recommended items. In this episode, we're going to formulate the movie lens recommendation problem as a multi-armed bandits problem and solve it with the bandits library. Matrix factorization is a commonly used method for building recommendation systems. The basic idea is that we have a rating matrix that contains the ratings for a set of movies from a group of users. The rating matrix is pretty sparse, so we need to find a way to predict the ratings for the movies that are not rated by the users while keeping the predicted scores as close to the ground truth ratings as possible. To do so, we want to learn a user embedding matrix U and a movie embedding matrix V transpose. This is why it's called a matrix factorization. Please check out this link to my other video to learn more about matrix factorization. Now, if we take the perspective of multi-armed bandits, the rows of U are context features, then the movies to be recommended to the users are the set of actions represented as rows of V transpose. The reward for recommending movie J to user I can then be calculated as the inner product of the corresponding rows of UI and VJ. Therefore, using the low rank SVD decomposition to compute the rewards gives us the ability to approximate the reward even for movies that were not recommended to the users. We have wrapped the training code for movie lens recommendations into a simple executable file for convenience. You can change the bandits agents being used or choose whether contextual features should be used in the command line. If you want to know how the training code is implemented, please check out the link to the file. The log will output the regret and suboptimal arms metrics during the training. You are already familiar with the regret metric since we discussed it in our last episode. The new suboptimal arms metric here means how often the agent chooses a non-optimal action during the training. After training, we can visualize the results. The results shown here are for no per arm feature setting. You can see that both the regret and suboptimal arms metrics are dropping as the training progresses. You can also see that linear UCB and linear Thompson sampling have very similar performance, which is not very surprising as they have very similar algorithms. On the other hand, neural epsilon greedy is not doing very well on this problem. After 50,000 iterations, the metrics are still far away from that of linear methods. Note nonetheless that even the epsilon greedy algorithm manages to find the best movie about half the time, which is not too bad. To be fair, it's expected that linear algorithms do better than nonlinear algorithms on this problem, as the problem is linear by the reward calculation construction. As for the difference between the two linear algorithms, it seems that linear UCB struggles in the beginning a little bit, but in the long run, it runs slightly better than linear Thompson sampling. But there are some shortcomings in this formulation. The actions of this movie lens environment are a selection of movies, so the algorithms have to learn a distinct model for every movie, and it's also hard to introduce new movies in the system. In this case, we change the environment a little bit. Instead of treating every movie as an independent action, we model the movies with features. Similarly to users, 
the rows of V transpose will be the movie features. Then the model only has to learn one reward function, whose input is both the user feature U and the movie feature V. This way, we can have an unlimited number of movies in the system, and we can introduce new movies on the fly. In this case, the epsilon greedy method with a neural network performs the best this time, while the linear methods seem to have trouble finding the relationship between actions and rewards. The point here is that you should try out different agents and hyperparameters for the bandits library to get the best results, just as what you would do in any other machine learning projects. Now, I want to share a case study using the bandits library to help build a powerful recommendation system. Digitech Galaxus is the largest online retailer in Switzerland and has multiple recommenders to recommend a wide range of products. In addition to home page or product page recommendation, Digitech also recommends products in their newsletters. For their newsletters, they already have 12 recommenders in place. How to select which recommender to use is formulated as a contextual bandits problem. Given some features about a user and each of the 12 available recommenders, Digitech aims to find the best recommender which increases the chance of the user clicking on at least one of the recommendation by the selected recommender, in which case there is a reward of plus one and minimizes the chance of incurring a click which leads to unsubscribe, in which case there is a reward of negative one. By using this formulation, the system would optimize for increasing clicks while still showing relevance and not clickbait content to the user in order to sustain the potential increase in performance. Right now, this system has been successfully deployed into production while TFX and the Digitech Alexis team is working on leveraging more features in TF agents to further improve it. Note that this is a slightly different setup than the MovieLens setup we have just talked about but it shows in a real-world application where it's not uncommon to have multiple recommenders, how you could leverage different techniques to optimize the complex recommendation systems. Feel free to check out this blog to learn more about it. So to summarize, today we walked you through how to leverage the Bandis library to tackle the movie lens recommendation problem. We also showed you how Digitech Galaxus leverages the Bandis library to provide better personalized newsletters to their customers. One last thing I want to note is that recommendation system is just one of the many use cases for the Bandis library, and the movie lens example we walked through is only an illustration of the Bandis library, not the main focus of this powerful library. On the other hand, if you are coming from the recommendation system angle, Bandits is one of the many approaches you could consider using for your recommendation system. In particular, you could also use bandits to tackle the challenging code start problem in any recommendation system. With that, I want to thank you for watching this video series of reinforcement learning with TensorFlow agents. Please stay tuned for more updates from TensorFlow agents. Thanks.